Hey everyone, welcome back. I believe this is the first time you see me in another program other than Cinema 4D because today we are going to be modeling a game prop in Cinema 4D. So this is what I got in Cinema 4D. As I said, I will be working in mid-poly workflow and in this tutorial I will be covering up these topics. First one is obviously the modeling process, then getting proper levels without spending too much geometry, then mesh optimization, the other one is UV unwrapping, and the final one is how to export your objects from Cinema 4D. Then I spent some time in Substance Painter to see if we are having any problem, any kind of normal or bevel problems, but there was no problem at all. By the way, the painting section is not included in this tutorial. I just did this to test the object out if it is working in Substance Painter. And finally, as you saw, I will finish this off by testing this mesh, this case, in Unreal Engine. Okay, I think now we can get into the tutorial. This time I will not start off by loading in an image plane. Instead, I have QRF over here, and in it I have my target object. So let's add in a cube. I'm gonna hit NNB to see the wireframes and I will add some segments to my cube, like two. Then let's make the cube editable, hit C. I will grab these edges real quick. Then I will bevel out these selected edges. Nice. Now let's grab the loop cut tool, Alt down shift and add this one right in the middle of these polygons. Since we have an end gun on the top, the cut will be applied to these perfect quads. So we need to finish off by connecting these points. And the tool I used is the connect points and edges tool. Okay, now let's select these polygons, invert the selection U and I and delete these polygons. Since the target object is quite repetitive, I could use Symmetry, right? So hold down Alt and use Symmetry. I'm going to change its type to Radial and set this to 4. Obviously, it's not going to be enough. I will need another one. Let's add this one in. Okay, X is looking fine, but we need Y as well. So enable this. From now on, it's going to be quite fast to model the whole shape. So let's move this down. I will add that loop cut in. I will need another one and another one over here. Now let's select that edge and move it up. Okay, something like that. I will then select these polygons and extrude these in. Now we are going to have these leftovers. And I got that question a lot actually about how to get rid of these when you are using symmetries. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact solution either. In the older version of the symmetry generator, it was quite easy, but in the newer version, I don't know exactly how to get rid of these leftovers. If you enable the wealth option, it's gonna get rid of some of them, but we are gonna still have these leftovers. So we need to manually delete them. There is always more than one way to do things, so don't worry. And I will turn off work plane and select these edges. Let's enable this back. I will move this down. Then let's go into points mode and play around with the proportions. It looks like we need to move this down like that. Then maybe we could select these, move these to the right. Then the top ones. Okay, that should work. Now I want to bevel out that edge to get that detail. So select it and bevel it out. Obviously, we need to make that triangle as flat as possible. I will use another, a different technique to do that. Let's enable snap. Go to the top view and move it to that point. Then I need to do the same thing on that point. This time uh, we are gonna need the right view. 
move it and it's going to automatically snap on the point. Nice. Let's turn this off. It looks like we need to move it to the left. I will move this point. Yes. Something like that. Now we are getting that bad looking polygon because we don't have an edge between these points. So select this and hit the M two times. Now let's check the top. I will add that edge in with the polygon pen tool. To make these edges straight, I will copy the position of that point. Ctrl C. We need the X position. Select this and paste that over. Nice. Now I will hold down Ctrl, bring this polygon down, remove that left over, then I'm gonna move that edge. Since we are using radial symmetry, these points are not gonna match, so I'm gonna move that one to the left. It's not gonna be perfect, but I will use a connect object when we are done with the object, so don't worry about that. Then the, ne the next detail I want to add, yeah, is this one. So I will hold down shift at that loop cut in, select these edges, bevel out them. I will need one more segment so that I could select it and move it up. I think we are done with the model. Now we are going to start to add in bevels. Before getting into bevels, we need to know that in order to have good looking bevels, we need to have a proper topology. So if I want to bevel these edges, let's select these and try to bevel out them. I'm going to get that look, which is not looking quite well. Well, the reason is this angle and this triangle. So as I said, we need a proper topology to get good bevels. So I'm going to add these edges in so that I could get, you know, that edge. So now we have a cloud over here. Also try to stay away from this kind of holes, especially if they are on the edges that you want to bevel. So by adding that edge, these edges in, I will be able to get rid of that edge. Now let's take a look at this one. This is an angle, so I need to add this one. Then we need to connect this one as well. Okay. Now since we have a proper topology, especially on these edges that we want to bevel, we should get much better result. Let's see, I'm gonna bevel these out. We don't need that subdivision, so I will set this to zero. And here we go. Maybe a little more than that. Something like this. Nice, nice looking bevels. We need one more thing to do with the bevel and it is the militaring type. I will set this to uniform so that we are gonna get these triangles. Normally, this is something that we don't want, but since we are not working in subdivision surface workflow, these triangles will be just fine, don't worry. We just need good topology, aka quads, in order to get good bevels. So after having the bevels, having these triangles is not gonna be a problem. On the contrary, these are gonna be really helpful when we start to optimize the mesh. Sorry, I forgot to add this edge to my selection. So I will bevel out this with the same amount of offset. Then I will select these edges. So select the first edge, then hold down Control and Shift and select the last one. Then I will bevel this out, but I want this to be rounder than the other ones. So something like that is going to be enough. Then these edges. Select them and bevel out these edges. Skip this. We don't need to bevel them. Then these ones bevel out. And here we go. So we need to convert these quads into triangles, just like these ones. So I will use polygon pen tool, get that edge right in the middle and about these points. Same here. 
nice and we need to do the same for these polygons okay since we have these symmetries what i have done should be applied to the other sides but just to make sure i'm gonna check them out okay we are looking fine over here and the last bevel I will be adding is going to be for the top part. So select these edges and bevel them out. I'm going to grab the polygon pen tool and connect this. Let's hit NNA. All right, this is looking quite bad. I mean, cannot use this, but in the next step, I will show you how to correct the normals. What I'm going to do. To correct the normals is quite easy actually, thanks to the newest Cinema 4D update. So all I need to do is click on the funk tag and change its style to square area weighted. And here we go. If you are getting these sharp edges, it's probably the use edge breaks is on, turn this off and increase up that funk angle. Great. But if you look at the edge amount, for such a low dense mesh, the bevels are looking quite good. Now let's make these metries editable. I will do that with a connect object. Just in case I will duplicate this off. You never know. Then I will open out and add that connect object in. As soon as I add this one in, we are gonna lose these normal details. So I need to change my funk mode to Manual. Nice. Now I will hit C on the connect, and here we go. We got the mesh. Now our next mission is going to be optimizing the mesh because we have a good amount of unnecessary edges. Let's start off by removing these center edges. We needed them for the symmetry generators, but we no longer need them. So select them and dissolve them. Then we have these ones. We no longer need them, so double click and dissolve. Now I will go ahead and remove unnecessary points. After that point, a proper topology is not needed. We needed that good topology to get good bevels, but after getting them, we no longer need to have a proper topology which means that I can have triangles on my mesh. We could start off by for example that edge. Again since this is a very repetitive shape why don't we enable symmetry help? I will need to enable Y and Z and I want to test this out by selecting that edge then I'm gonna hit NNG to see if the same Edge is selected on the other sides. It looks okay. I was gonna use the polygon pen tool, but unfortunately, the polygon pen tool is not working well when the symmetry help is enabled. So I will use slide tool. It works a little bit better. So I'm gonna hold down control and move that point to the nerby one. Same here. And that one. Okay, we need to do the same thing on this side. So hold down control, merge the points. Okay, let's see the other sides. Okay, I think we can turn off the symmetry hub. Then grab back polygon pen tool and merge these. And let's check out the bottom. So obviously this part is not going to be visible. So no need to have that detail. Then I will use close polygon all tool, then polygon pen tool and optimize it more. Okay, I'm gonna hit four, hit NNA. We are done with the optimizing. Now the next step is gonna be UV unwrapping. By the way, I want to know how many polygons we have. Hopefully it is under one. 
thousand. So select them all. It says we have nine hundred forty-seven, which is quite good for such cool looking objects. Now, as I said, let's move on to the UV edit. I'm gonna switch my layout to do UV edit. And I don't think we need to see that pure ref. So I will move it away by pure ref. Also, I will move the add keystrokes to the center. Okay, we are good to go. Obviously, we have some information about the UVs, but I will reset them. Then I'm gonna, just like I always do when I am about to UV unwrap my objects, I will select the sharp edges. And to do that, Quickly, I will use font break selection tool. If you're in a hurry, you could use the automatic projections such as the box. It's gonna do quite a well job. If I pack them, it's gonna make more sense. Yeah, these are looking quite good. This is another option when you are about to unwrap your objects, especially these objects are hard surface objects. You are good to go to do them like that, but I usually and to select sharp edges. So as I said, I will be using font break selection tool. It is right under the selection. Yes, this one. So I will go into edge mode. So these highlighted edges will be selected. Sometimes it might be too much, like still is gonna select the edges based on that angle. So I will first turn off use edge breaks. This might select some unnecessary edges. I might lower that down to select these triangles. Okay, these are looking fine. I'm gonna click on select all, then I will click on UV unwrap. These are gonna be really small, so we need to pack them. Make sure you selected them all, all the polygons, then go to the packing, enable equalize island size, and Click on apply. Okay, not that bad. Maybe we could align that UV Islands. I'm gonna click on UV, align UV Islands. I don't want to pack it one more time because we have another detail coming up. So after connecting these, I will pack them one more time. So now we are good to go. Speaking of that other detail, let's add this one in. I'm gonna switch back to model. And I will bring back the pure ref. So I was talking about that detail. It's gonna be quite easy. I will just steal some polygons from my main mesh. So select these polygons. Then I will split this out, U and P. I'm gonna solo it. Then I will grab polygon pen tool and start to connect these points. Okay, now let's flatten out these edges. Select them, hold and shift, and stop at 0%. Same here. I can get rid of that unnecessary edge. I'm gonna select them all, scale them on the Z. Move that down. I know these are not looking exactly the same if you compare this, but it's not why we are here. I will set this to world, move it up, move it out, then move this edge. And also I want to be sure these are perfectly flat. I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, I think we are good to extrude these, select them all. Extrude tool, I'm gonna enable create caps option and extrude out this. Since that object has the same font tank coming from the original mesh, these normals will look bad. Don't worry, we are gonna, I'm gonna fix it in a few seconds. Then I will make an inset and I will push this out with the normal move tool. I'm gonna bring down that font angle. To bevel the edges of this object, I will be using bevel deformer. Hold and shift at this one in. I'm gonna hit NMB. 
Okay, this is looking quite good. We could use that. I think, yeah, that was quite easy. We are done with that object. I will apply that to former, then I will need to unwrap the UVs. I'm going to do that before duplicating that object around so that we don't have to deal with the other ones, UVs. So let's switch back to UV edit. I'm going to remove these polygons, sorry, UVs. Then let's try the box. Well, not that bad. I think we could use it, but it's going to be always much better if you unwrap your objects by hand by selecting the sharp edges. But to make things fast, faster, I will use that projection. Now I'm going to connect this. Product objects and delete. Select them all, Control A, and pick them. Nice. Then I want to duplicate this around. I will spit out that selection. I will go into model mode and we could use symmetry. I will select the radial one and set this to four. Nice. Then I will enable weld, make it editable. So by doing that, we are gonna gain a little bit more space in the UV editor. Four of them will have the same exact UV space. By the way, we have this duplicated object. I will just delete it. Now I will connect these back, connect objects and delete. I don't need to hack them one more time. We could also check out distortion, for example. Yeah, we don't have too much maybe for these objects. Yeah. So this is why you need to unwrap your objects by selecting art edges. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay, we are looking good over here. I'm going to turn these off. Let's go back to the standard. Now I want to export this object out. But before doing that, we need to add a normal tag to our object. Because if you export this out with a funk tag, it may not look the same in, say, Substance Painter. So before exporting out your objects, obviously if you are, if you are going to use Substance Painter or Unreal Engine, try to add a normal tag, and I'm going to show you why. So first, let me select these polygons and open up Normal Editing Tool. I'm going to click on From Selected. This is going to add a normal tag to our object, and I was right about my concern. On the normals. After adding this one in, I got these sharp edges. And this is probably the look that I would probably get in Substance Painter if I export the object with only the funk tag. So I will show you how to fix that real quick. It's going to be really easy thanks to this new normal editing tool. So all I need to do is select these bevels. I'm going to use loop selection tool. You could include these ones as well. It's not going to be a problem. So hold on shift. By the way, you could use the symmetry hub. But sometimes I feel doing this kind of repetitive tasks relaxing, kind of. I will probably speed through this. Make sure you selected all the bad looking bevels. You could select the good looking ones. It's not going to be important. Then all I need to do is click on the selected. Yes, it is that easy. Now these bevels look good again. Now we are safe to export this object out. So first, let's rename that to case and go to file, click on FBX. Remember to enable normals. You don't need to enable these materials. Also, the other thing, the important thing is that selection only enable this. 
I spent some time in Substance Painter and I saw no problem at all. Everything went flawlessly. So, no problem at all over here. But to test this out, ultimately, obviously, I will see you in Unreal Engine. So, here I am in Unreal Engine. And again, everything went just great. No problem at all. So, I could easily say that the mission is successfully completed. I hope you liked the tutorial, learned something new. I will be doing this kind of tutorials in the future because I really like the process of creating this kind of game props. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.